Are you aiming to get to the stage where you are filming big budget movies, big special effects movies, or are you happy to just sort of stay at the, at the level with the victim where it's slightly lower? I mean, as the producer half, I think, I, I think the formula works this way, and we still have a lot to prove mm -hmm. with this formula, but if, if someone wants to hand us you know, more money and, and turn us into kind of a studio and make bigger budgets, I don't know that we would be turning them down if, they, you know, if it's effortless. No, not, probably not. I don't, I don't really, uh, I don't know if I, yeah, I mean, I would, at that point I, I would feel like I'm a little bit more like an administrator. Yeah. I don't know, if, you, if it was a big budget movie, uh, I probably wouldn't be cast as the star of it. Mm -hmm. um, there would be, um, you know, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio or something along <laughs> those lines. And, Michael uh, could play, you know. I, I, uh, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't mind uh, kind of, uh, kind of overseeing something like that, having somebody else direct it and just produce, really. I think I'm actually, would, would be a better producer than uh, director. Um, I threw myself into I think into he's a the, great director, though, I have to say. Well, thank you, but I, 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 <laughs> I, I threw myself into the director's chair because on such a low budget, I was able to pay the star of the movie, one of the stars, myself, and the director. You know, <laughs> all in one. All in one, a very small. And one of the stars and the producer. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, really it went like, on and on and on. What I really that. like to do is I'd like to kind of stand back and, and, and find young talent, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. kind of nurture young talent and, and, and watch them. Uh, as compared to doing big budget, you know, I look at big budget movies, you know, you like a T4 and T5 and Pirates of the Caribbean, like. Part eight, and you know <laughs> all these movies like that. You know, and I, I, I don't, I can't see myself doing that at all. You know, what I'd rather do is, I'd rather kind of stay in a, a genre which is like a smaller genre, and then uh, slowly kind of pull myself out of it and prove that I can make these movies profitable, and then let some young talent, some young kids yeah. who haven't had a chance to, 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 to get like. Um, Two, three, four hundred thousand dollars to make the movie and let them go make the movie. I think you'll see that we're going to start doing father figure some to, to, to some kids who, uh, who, who, you know, there's a lot of kids around who want to make movies and uh, just need a, a little bit of a spark. And I'd like to, like to give back in that sense. You mentioned yesterday in the QA that um, you, have, was it, you have a son um, who was watching, was it Tombstone that he was, he was watching? Uh, my, my, little, my little boy for the first time saw Terminator. I have a little boy, um, and I, you know he's five, and I have a list of films that I'm really looking forward to seeing. Star Wars is on there, Terminator, Aliens, uh, but I'm conscious of you know that I have to hold some of these back until he's a little bit older. Um, are you aware? Are you, you conscious of the fact that a lot of the films that you've made are aimed more towards an adult audience? Uh, you know, are you happy enough to maintain that? Or are you maybe thinking that you start making movies that cater more to a younger audience? Uh, you know, how, how, how do you feel about that? Um, he, he, so my son is going to be nine in March, okay? So he saw The Terminator for the first time and uh, at nine, and he was with me. Yeah. And so there's a little bit difference of watching a movie like The Terminator when you don't have, like, your dad who plays the lead in the movie kind of explain to you yeah. the entire time. But, uh, no, I mean, I don't, I don't think children should be, you know, exposed to it those type of movies um, until they're, you know, 14, 15 years old, 16 years old, and are, are even young, even young adults. No, I don't think, Alien's a pretty violent movie, I think, and it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's very it's scary. scary. It's scary, yeah. I mean, it scared yeah. me. Yeah. I was in the show, front row. Show that to an eight-year-old kid. Yeah. New York. Yeah, I think you really, you know, I mean, I think it is, again, nightmares and so on and so forth, and I'm not, uh, I think, Children are children, and there are, they make so many brilliant children movies these days. I mean, that's, Maybe uh, one fourth of the market of the big budget movies is Pixar and all these companies that are making all these children movies. Let them go see those movies, you know. That's and, right. uh, you know aliens that you can bake and wait for, for that kind of stuff, you know. And, uh, no, sorry, I know I'm aware that you're in a hurry and I don't want to keep you, but I have, I have two final questions uh, I want to ask you. One is about the death scene in Tombstone. Um, you know, I, I'd watched it recently, and to be honest with you, I'd kind of forgotten the death scene, but the it's just so iconic, you know, when, when Doc Holliday, Val Kilmer shoots you and then he's, he, you know, he's sort of, he's like, come on, come on, and you're walking towards him and, you know, we, we talked a bit about this in the Q&A yesterday, um, but, you know, it's like your character really doesn't want to die and it's just, it's just such a, you don't just fall over and die like they tend to do in movies. Um, can you talk to us about that a little bit? Uh, actually, Val Kilmer and I went out 
the day before we shot that, while the rest of the uh, crew was working on uh, another scene with Kurt Russell and uh, um, the Earps. And we went out and we choreographed that scene and we wanted to do, to do something different. And uh, one of the things that we decided to do was instead of like this gunfight where he's standing way over there and I'm standing way over here, which is like every Western you've ever seen, you're always like 20 feet apart or whatever, you know. shots, yeah. we thought like, wouldn't it be cool if we were just like standing right next to each other, you know. So that was kind of the first choice that we made, you know. And then we decided that we would do this kind of dance where we kind of were walking kind of turning and walking around each other. And we really choreographed that out. And I, what I really wanted to do was, uh, you know, I wanted to, uh, there's a moment in that, in, that, in that piece where like, and Johnny Ringo kind of has, has a death wish. And you know, uh, Johnny, I think, is somebody who's, you know, he's, he's tired of life. He's, life has nothing to offer him anymore, and, and except for that kind of excitement. So that's why he smiles and he says, "All right, well, you know, let's do it," yeah. you know, because this is exciting for him, yeah. you know. And, uh, and and and, and it's a it's a good scene in that sense. And then I get shot, and 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 you know, he still has that dialogue, you know, where he's saying, "Come on, come on," you know. And I'm trying, you know, and I shoot I shoot my gun. And it was really all it was really all rehearsed that uh, Val and I uh, got together the day before. We, we rehearsed every. Every moment of that scene, put that scene together, down to where I was shooting. Even after I've been shot in the head, I still get a shot off, yeah. even though it's in the ground. You know, I'm still like, you know. And um, Val's a, uh, a joy to work with. Uh, some people find him, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, too uh, uh, passionate. But uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm passionate too, you know. So uh, I really find him a joy to work with. And. Uh, we were real hard on that, and uh, you know that's what happens when you when you get together. You rehearse it, and you figure it out, and you know we we did something from a gunfight standpoint that like you know it's just never done been done before. It's like the uh, it's like the uh, the uh, the credits in um, in, in uh, the victim. You know we, we we show the people, we show who the filmmaker, what this cameraman looks like, we show what this sound man looks like, we show them. And it's never been done before. And it's kind of fun to do something on film that, like, okay, people have been doing something for 80 years. You've never seen a gunfight where people are like this before. You've never seen credits. You know, you try to do something that's different. Try to create something that's different. And uh, I think if you can do that, then you're really kind of ahead of the game, and, and you can look back and go, yeah, I added something to the to the medium, you know, yeah. during my time. Yeah. Okay. One last question. Out of all the scenes and all the movies that you've been in. Um, if someone were to ask you, what is the one defining scene or movie that you have made, what would it be? Well, I, I'd have to say it's the, uh, it's the Terminator, you know, I mean, that's, that's really, uh, that was a character that was uh, uh, a brilliant character because he was not only this great fighter, but he was in love, you know, so that's a, that's a character that you know, men can relate to very much so, you know, because he was such a tough guy, you know. And at the same time, too, women can relate to because he crosses time, you know, for this love. So it's a great love story. And it's, he's also this kind of great fighter at the same time. So um, I think that that was a combination that, you know, is kind of unbeatable, you know, uh, of, of being a, uh, a great fighter and a great kind of romantic love story at the same time. And Michael's very yeah. romantic with you. <laughs> <laughs> In his own way. <laughs> Michael, Jennifer. Jennifer, on behalf of Belfast, W5, Heroes and Legends and Following the Nerd, thank you very much and we wish you all the best with the victim. Take care. What are you yelling at me for?